Not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. Service, on the other hand, is the steering to the leadership ministry and for you to serve, you need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. The purpose for the priority given by the church about this training is because everyone is a leader. You have a potential for leadership. However, there are certain things that you need to be taught, many things you need to learn. Not all of us are born leaders. Even born leaders are trained. And therefore, we would like to encourage you because all of you as you join ministry, it is important that you are given skills to help you manage people. Beyond uh, what you call spiritual skills, we also need certain physical skills that, skills that can enable you to be a better leader tomorrow. Unless we have leaders and accept to be led, then life will most likely come to a standstill. Sometimes, as a Christian, we can blame Satan, but the problem is always the people. Yes, the people refuse to be led or to lead by going against the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The leadership gap that seems to be evident in some of our ministries, not just in NGC, but out there as well, in our offices, even the political field, can only be solved by those who have availed themselves at the Lord's feet to learn from him because he was the master teacher in leadership. Other times, the leadership type becomes a misfit to the lead. We are training leaders uh, on leadership style as a way uh, one uses to, to lead or to influence others. Uh, we are looking at different leadership styles like uh, autocratic leadership. Uh, autocratic leadership is the type of leadership where the power uh, or everything is centered around the boss. The, uh, the boss does not consult. So we, we, we look at uh, autocratic leadership and we ask ourselves, is it, uh, is it a good uh, style of leadership for a Christian, for example? In this 21st century, leadership can be guided by the following principles. Who are you leading? How can you lead best? Are you making your contribution to the maximum? Are you getting better day by day? It is true that all of us know how to do certain things, but how we do those things can be improved. For example, how you manage people. I know all of you, a lot of us say, yes, I can manage, I can manage people. But then what skills are required to manage people? What skills do I need to help me prepare goals or do goal setting? And in our leadership program, some of the things we emphasize on includes decision making. Decisions make leaders. Leaders have been defined by the choices and the decisions that they made. This training helps you to make decisions in a very systematic way and in line with the word of God. Don't just wake up and decide. There are steps that you follow so that we can be able to know that you made a good, a good decision, not emotional, not rational, and in the best interest of your ministry and of the individuals. What about one of the challenges that most believers face through called burnout? How do you handle burnout? We are working so hard to serve God but sometimes we forget that these bodies can get tired. How do you handle that? Another thing that we learn is teamwork. How can we work together? Because Christ commanded us to work as a team. The Christian journey was never to be done alone. It was meant to be done in teams. And therefore, as a leader, I have to be a team maker, a team builder, a team former. How do we do that? We look at strategic leadership style. Uh, where the leader embraces teamwork, uh, the leader also embraces organization. Uh, he allows uh, things to run in an organized way. We look at uh, transformational uh, leadership style, uh, where they, as a leader you are able to initiate change in the organization. Or uh, charismatic leadership. We have uh, seen charismatic leaders uh, even in the secular world, like uh, Nelson Mandela. We pledge ourselves to liberate all our people
from the continuing bondage of poverty. Uh, where the, the leader inspires, where the charismatic uh, leader motivates the team, for example. And then finally we look at uh, visionary leadership. Because I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. And it is said that uh, successful leaders have the aspect of uh, vision in them. Leadership is wide and challenging. To perform it effectively, you need the correct guidance and techniques from those who have done it before. It is that fundamental belief, I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper. Therefore, every year there is always set aside a time, a six-week session where we can be able to have a leadership session and sometimes we combine the session, we combine the modules depending on, on, on how we have structured the trainings for the year. This training that we have in GCI will be able to help you to manage some of these very basic fundamentals uh, to enable you be effective in ministry. I learned uh, how I can use my integrity to serve as a leader. Uh, what I've learned has, has really impacted my life as a servant that uh, it is easier for you to lead uh, as a servant and it is easier for you to, to guide other people in the way they should go. The training was uh, I learned about timekeeping and also how I relate to other people. I learned how to, as a leader, you should have a vision. I learned how I can be able to disciple someone from uh, the first step until uh, maturity. Whatever I learned in that training has really enhanced something in my life. Therefore, any time you have an additional skill, it implies that you can be able to do better and more excellently as is the vision of this church. Um, let me take this opportunity to thank all of you who took time to be trained under the syllabus that we have in GCI Central. First of all, I want to believe that you have got basic information. It is not total information. It's basic information that can help you to start off. We have got different levels of training and we are requesting you that um, in the next sets of training where we have probably level two, uh, whether we have a refresher course or an additional training, please be available. The key thing in this church as we are growing is we want to have as many leaders as possible who, who are at the disposal of the service and the needs of the church. And therefore, once again, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you for taking your time. And whatever you've learned, please put it in practice. It is what you practice that becomes part of you. If you don't practice it, then it doesn't become part of you, and therefore you've actually lost uh, what you learn, and you've actually lost time. And therefore, I want to say God bless you, and thank you very much uh, for your contribution and your participation. For the teachers, I also want to say thank you very much for your contribution and your time, because running such a program is not easy. It is expensive, it's costly, but because of the need that we see in the church, the teachers have taken out their time, some of them their money, to ensure that this exercise actually happens. Thank you very much and God bless you.